Well, how are you doing, Mr. Sams? Oh, you're back to the accent, Mr. I got accent because I'm a smart guy. Accent. Hello, how do you do? Howdy. How come you not try new accent? You tried last time. I did. I don't know. It might come back later. I might, might get come back later. We'll see okay. what happens. Guess what we talk about today? Uh, more thermodynamics. And it's like all like uh, what's the big word? Mm, oh, it's that dirty word, right? Math. math. Oh yeah. Last we time was must... conceptual. Now we this have lots of math. The math. So what do you think our kids need today when they're going to be like uh, watching uh, the podcast? Calculator. Gotta have the calculator. Yeah. Probably you're also going to need, ladies and gentlemen, your back, your book, your book, your book, I, and the back of your book. You will find. Oh, where's our book? Here it is, right here, Mr. Sam. Okay. Oh, we're good. Turn to the back of your book, and you'll find the section on thermodynamics. Thermodynamics. Everybody say thermo. Thermo. Die. Dynamics. Oh, and we've got even an audience. Why say it again? Thermo audience. Thermodynamics. Say hey, these people yeah. are amazing. So, right. we're gonna be doing a lot of math today. So, um, let me talk uh, a little bit through this. Um, when we talk about calculating thermodynamic quantities. I want to do a little review with you. Um, in chapters five and six, um, actually chapter six, we had a conversation about uh, how you can calculate delta H. Um, now, what is delta H again? Uh, that's their enthalpy. Now, what's that mean? Enth that's a fancy word. Yeah, it's the, me the measure of uh, heat change. So the heat change in a reaction. We learned in that particular chapter there are four ways to calculate delta H. Yep. The first one was calorimetry. And you might recall that was like Q equals MC delta T, and then you divide by mm -hmm. the moles. Yep. All right. And the second method was Hess's Law version one, where we added a bunch of reactions. Okay, so think back to how you did that, guys. All right, go watch podcast six point whatever to figure that out. You remember the third one was? Uh, Hess's Law version number two, products minus reactants. Yep, that's Hess's Law version two. Yep, and uh, the products minus reactants, the values for that are gonna be in the appendix in the back of the book, the one that I was just looking up a second ago. So products minus reactants, and the fourth one is bond energy, and guess what? We're not even going to talk about that until we learned about bonding. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, chapter 8. So. Later. And it sounds weird. Chapter 8, we're in chapter 16. Remember, we don't do it in yeah, standard order. Yeah, we go out of order. We're, we're special order. like that. We're special. So that's kind of what we're going to do. And that, that's just a review of mm -hmm. something we've uh, learned before. Yep. All right. But there's also two other thermodynamic quantities. Right. We, we learned last time we have delta S, which, which is, is called entropy. That's right. That's, a chain, that's the change in the amount of disorder in a system. Disorder. Uh, it's yeah. disorder like it your is. desk. It's, it's like a you, very disordered It's like you thing. order food and then you disorder it because you decided you didn't want the cheeseburger. Well, it's also no. true, if you think about it, if you eat the food, it oh, yeah. seems then it very, gets very organized disordered. and yeah. it gets disorganized in your stomach. It does. And then it becomes all into your body. The it's very disordered. Yeah. Stuff. All right. Now, something very important about Delta S. The units must always be what? Um, let's see. Usually given in joules per, per Kelvin. Kelvin. Yeah, and you have to convert those to kilojoules because delta H and delta G usually show up as kilojoules. Yeah, delta H is kilojoules per mole, mm -hmm. and delta G is uh, kilojoules per mole. And for whatever reason, all the thermodynamic books, in fact, if you have your book open to page mm -hmm. A21, which has the table of thermodynamic quantities, you will discover that they are in joules per Kelvin right here. And so you want to watch that. Yep. All right. Okay. So now let's talk some more. Mm. Now, delta G, how do you calculate delta G? That's a Delta G. Name. Well, last time we learned delta G equals delta H minus T delta S. All right, that's this first one. The most common, I say by far, the most common of all the equations. Yep. Now, um, you're going to learn a new one when we talk about electrochemistry. That's a funny looking E. Yeah. It looks, it looks like the, Euro, is that the Euro symbol? I think that's for Euros. But yeah, anyhow, it's, it's, it's e NFE. Euro. It's like a big capital squiggly cursive. We'll learn cursive. what the heck, what in the world is an E? It has to do with voltages. Yeah, that's like electrochem. A, and so that's chapter 17. Yep, and then so we're going we're to ignore that for right we're now. We're going to tie delta G into equilibrium. Like Ooh. we said last time, you're not done with equilibrium because... Okay, that's how chemistry works. There's the big K. So, yep. Oh. We talked briefly about this last time, but we have delta G equals negative RT times the natural log of K. All right. So, so now we we'll want to do back. a reaction. Yep. So um, we want to find delta G, delta H, and delta S for this reaction. And we need to go to the appendices mm -hmm. in the back of the book. So if you have not done this, pause the video. Go to that page, page A21. Now, if you are watching this on the Internet, you need to get a textbook. And it is always in the back of the book, the table of thermodynamic quantities. And then you can look up these values. Yep. Okay. And if you have Zumdahl 6th edition, it's in A21. Yep, that's right. So we have a reaction here. Yep. And um, let me copy it down. Yeah, we have two, two SO2. S Oh, I guess I probably should not Use the have right the end of the eraser pen. turned on. I have the eraser turned on. So 2SO2. That was and my And that's problem. a gas. Hey, that's a funny SO2, huh? 
<laughs> I had the uh, other feature The shape turned feature turned out. We have okay. too many things turned on. Plus, Plus O2, O2 gas. makes... Uh, it's a gas, by the way. Two All these are gas. SO3s. It's yeah. not important. Now, what I want you to do not is I one. want you to look up delta H and delta S oh, yeah. in the table. Do I got to get to my sulfur section here. So, so most of these are organized by element. Okay, here we go. So yeah. we want delta H for SO2? Yeah. All right, delta H for SO2 is negative 297. Negative 297. And that's okay. kilojoules per mole. Yeah. I'll if we care. Kilojoules per mole right here. Okay. Okay. What's the oxygen? Actually, oxygen. Mr. Oxygen, Sam, yeah. what is oxygen? Well, that's not in my book. I can't find it. I know you can't. Actually, it is in your book. But it you is know, in my book. If you looked You're it up in your book, you know what you'd find? Zero. It'd be zero because remember, elements in their standard state, this is a gas, this is a gas, um, will be zero. Yeah. Okay. And then the sulfur trioxide. SO3 gas, negative 396. By the way, and Mr. Bergman said that the states don't matter. In this problem, they don't matter because these are always gases. But sometimes, be careful. Uh, if it says water gas or water liquid, they're going to have different values for delta H. Okay, so be careful. now delta S, now uh, actually it's actually S0, not delta S, isn't it? Right. And H0, so too. It's, all right, so I'm erasing that. All right, now, um, actually, now an important point, the oxygen is not zero. I think it's 204. You do which uh, one SO2 doing? is, um, SO2 is SO2 248. Is 248. And that's joules per k-mole, don't forget. Okay. And then oxygen, we actually can look that one up because S is different. It's 205. Oh, it's pretty yeah. pretty close. I thought it was 204. Yep. All right, and SO3? SO3 is 257. 257. All right. So we want to do products minus reactants. Mm -hmm. All right. So if I do the sum of the products, so the products for um, the SO3, I'll take two times uh, negative three ninety six mm -hmm. minus the quantity of two times negative two ninety seven. I could ignore the oxygen because, of course, it's zero, right? Yep. And that comes out to be um, just about done. Negative one ninety eight kilojoules per mole. My pen is doing a little dragging thing here. I don't know what's going on. I don't know. Is your finger on the button? Um, no, I don't think so. Okay. Right. And All now right. for the S, so this is delta H. So for delta S, I'm going to take what? 2 times 257. 257. Plus nope. 0. Oops. Oh, yeah. I guess there's no something there. My Wait, mistake. What? Minus the quantity of. Two, two times, times 248. 248 plus, is there one oxygen? I think there uh, is. There's just one oxygen, yeah. Plus, so plus 205. 205, close parentheses, and that comes out to be? Uh, hang on, I'm frantically, I made a mistake. I have to go back. You're going from 2 to Oh, he's going to try to do it in his head, folks. It would be about um, a positive 100. Uh, uh. Parentheses at negative 187. Negative 187. Oh, it should be negative. I should yeah. be negative 100. Okay. My business. Negative 187. Now that's joules, joules per, per Kelvin mole. mole. Okay. Now, how do we find delta G? Well, we could do it two different ways. We could also do products minus reactions, but I think it's easier just to use the delta G equals delta H minus T delta S. Now, in our book, it says that the temperature is uh, 295, I think. So we need to use a temperature. So we have to have oh, yeah. a specific temperature. And I think that's not printed in your paper, but... but we'll actually print it for them yes. <laughs> when it comes out. Yeah, we'll fix that. That's something we will fix. So, so delta H is what? Negative 198. Yep. So this is negative 198. Now watch what I do this, folks. Minus the Kelvin temperature, we said 298, times delta S. Now what am I going to put in for delta S, though? Uh, you're not going to put 187 because that's joules, so you need to multiply that. No, divide that by 1,000 to get um So I did this in my head. Now, some of you may need to do this. I, I took this. Of course, I took this number, negative 187, and I divided by 1,000 to convert it to kilojoules. And so, folks, you've got to watch that. This is in joules. It's in joules, and this one is in kilojoules. And you must have them in the same unit or you have problems, right? There's the accent. Okay, it's, it's very back. problematic. Okay. All right, we got negative 254 kilojoules per mole. Now, what does that mean? That means um, for every mole, we're going to release 254 kilojoules of energy. So that's energy that's going out of the system, so it's available to do work. 
Now, another thing I want you to realize, folks, it's very important to understand the sign of this. Mm -hmm. This is negative, and so if it's negative, what does that mean about delta G? Delta G is spontaneous. So that means it will happen by itself. Yes. And while we're at it, delta H is negative, so that means it is exothermic. exothermic. Everybody say exothermic. So it's exothermic. That means energy is released. And it's negative here, so it's getting more... More ordered. Ordered. So or less delta H disordered. and delta S are working against each other, but that's okay. And I would have predicted that this was getting more ordered because of the reaction itself. Right. We've got three moles of gas becoming two moles of gas. If you look if you up look here, up. you've got three moles of gas being converted to two moles of gas. So two moles of gas are more ordered than three right, moles of gas. Right, because gas is messy. It's yeah. chaos. There you go.